You see all kind of movies on, all kind of documents on, people shoot up, they make money off it, and we still be like here looking stupid. I don't want to explain none of this shit. Because if I allowed the bad things to control me, then I wouldn't be here. I wasn't coming back here. But I have to. I have a family. I got kids. I have to do that. Have really healthful food. It's really good for you. You know where it's coming from. You know who you're supporting. You know you're not putting much chemicals in your body. You know it's healing the earth and the animals. If you if you eat meat, the animals are being treated well and all of that. It's good. But if you don't have a stable living situation, if you don't feel safe in your neighborhood, if um, you or your kids aren't getting the sort of education that empowers you to be full participants in democracy, um, and you can't get a job then the food is nice, but it's not going to get you and your family and your community to the place that you need to be. Um, so that the food really is just a foundation, and we found it works really well as a starting point to be able to do a whole bunch of things, um, both as an educational tool and then also as a, an economic engine. This garden right here is the after-school garden. So it's run by and all the decisions are made by after school students. But do they work over there also? They do, they do, they do. But that's unlike it's that's them helping Nathaniel with the things he has to do. So they, they get paid fifty dollars a week separately, and then whatever they make here is extra. So if they don't grow anything, they don't make any money. If they grow a lot, they make money. And, and we cut all the ones with holes in them. I came here originally in April of two thousand and six. I. Um, Came on a on a volunteer trip to cut grass and and gut houses where you take out all take out all the, the insides of the house after the it was pretty much immediately after the hurricane uh, and then in the summer of 2008 um, I decided I wasn't going to go back to New York I was going to stay here and see if I could figure out how to do something with young people in this neighborhood there was nowhere at that point for them to go there was no after school jobs there was nowhere that had adult supervised activities for kids after school or on weekends. It's, it seems like a lot of kids didn't have homework at all, um, which is strange to me. Um, and then I realized a whole bunch of kids I was working with couldn't read at all, didn't have very like basic skills. Um, so I said I'm going to have to figure out another way to do this. So it started off as just a homeschool program. And then Turner got the idea to, Turner got the idea to plant some food uh, in, a, in a bathtub that he had in the backyard and he just like planted some lettuce and some onions and stuff and he was like huh that's great that can be a revenue source at least you know like instead of relying on grants and whatnot he's like we grew a food and we can sell it to the neighborhood and you know it'll be something I always kind of think of it as so we're three years old now and we're getting a lot better at, at our farming and we're getting a lot better in terms of selling stuff and we've like I guess gain a reputation and for having really good high quality stuff for the restaurants and it just looks super pretty and tastes really good and super super fresh and we're the sec yeah probably the second largest employer in the lower nine port yeah, we, we employ uh, 15 people and so the elementary school down the road is probably the first largest employer and, but I don't know of any other organization that provides the amount of jobs that we do to local neighborhood people. We have an asshole political system. They don't do right by people who can't do nothing for themselves. What make you think they're going to do right by me? Or anybody else for them now? What make you think they be going to legalize or uh, bring about more job reforms and all this here, better schooling and better education for the children? If they've been selling people out all their life, what make you think they're going to change now?
this is and it have nothing to do with the political system because if the political system had anything to do with what we're doing right now, they probably would be against it. I'm trying to promote jobs, promote health, healthy growth, healthy eating. That's all this base up on. It don't really have nothing to do with politics. We would like to see it expand to another level, but then again, like I say, we don't have the support of politicians in the city or the state. So you depending on politicians to see this advance, and I'm going to tell you right now, it ain't going to happen. Tell it to anybody. Ain't no politicians supporting them. Politicians get rich off of their political campaign contributions. And they use that money they done poor people done gave to them to get rich off and start this shit. And even if they don't get elected in the seat where they're going for, they still be the took half of your savings and shit and use that for the send their children to college. And you back broken, back in the poor house with a, a lot of broken ass promises. It is what it is. And we all it is to it. That's my opinion. Well, all the students get paid fifty dollars a week, um, it's not a, which is not a lot. Uh, think they might not come if they weren't getting paid, but the reason that they come is not just because they're getting paid. Like they're, they might say that the, the only reason that well I'm here because this is for money, but it's I think it's a lot more than that. What's important for you? Work and money. It's a, it's a, it's urban farm and it's working with the youth and, like, and that's our mission right that's the goal it's about making New Orleans food sovereign and then other things just happen right it just happens to be a space for everybody to go to a safe space for people to be it just happens to be a place where people can eat when they're hungry right it's a place it's a second place for them to be very right. Alan he was marked up for bad behavior and for cutting class too often and so their solution to that problem was to not let him go to class and now he wants to go back and he can't go back. He's here all day long, six days a week, sometimes seven days a week. And he has a place to do his art and doing what he wants to do. And he's like happy and inspired and motivated, right? Because he has a place to do it here. Can we make up eight hours on the weekend? So What's you on? making up hours? You make you want to um, like claim yeah. more things. Yeah. Like if I grow this, I could grow some more stuff. And then when you like when you cook on your own, that's that's like tight. So it gonna make you, you you're not gonna stop doing it. You gonna keep on playing. Like one person from outside just can't come and be like, oh yeah, I need to eat, eat this and do this. Cause like we not gonna listen to it. You don't know, you know, he don't know our background. But somebody that's been here and know what's going on, when you see them get engaged, that means you want like makes you want help too and get involved. See like some people you think that you want to have nothing in common with. That's like. Your best friend. You know, you find out they're real interested and you don't know what they're capable of. It's this sense of accomplishment you get when you finish a project, when you like work from something to start to finish. It's just so rare that people find that. And just to be able to give that to people, to give them a space where they can feel that and then give them something that can change their lives. Give them something that where it's something you can grow to so you can actually come to this better, larger understanding. And I think that's real important. And I think that's more important than the farming aspects is actually being able to just like do things for the people, with the people. There's tons of land in New Orleans that was just all abandoned. Nobody really has any plans for it. And if you can do something different, if you can do something interesting with it, I think you're going great. If you can like try to instead of I don't know, we don't need more prefab houses. Like those things just look disgusting. If you can have sort of real places like a place to go to, a community center for your kids to go to. Like if you can have basketball hoops to keep people away. If you can do things like that, you're doing something right. You're just being able to create more resources, more opportunities, more places to grow. That's what I work towards every day. Hopefully we'll get there, and I really pray we do. If you succeed at urban farming, if you make a, if you make a community food sovereign, right? If you employ everybody, if you have a perfect model for social justice in New Orleans, and you're, it's it's amazing, and it's transitional economy, it's perfect. If it's not everywhere else, if it's not across the entire globe, then it it doesn't matter as much. It doesn't matter because you have 
40, 400,000 people and you have a niche of where it really works and where it's perfect, but if it's not everywhere, then it's only, it's only a niche, it's only 40, 400,000 people, you know, but, you know, and so if we get volunteers and have 300 volunteers come here and just three of them, one out of every 100, under, figures it out and it clicks and the light bulb goes off and they do something big, right, and you can keep on doing that, and right, that's, that, that's the importance of tours and volunteers. If you, if you come and work and understand that the challenges that people are facing here are exactly the same challenges that people are facing in your hometown or in the city next to you or in that other neighborhood over there that you all, everybody knows it. Well, who's from the city of North Carolina? Wait, what, what city is it again? Charlotte. Alright, what's, what, what, what's the hood part of Charlotte? Where's the hood west at? Side, west side, west, west And what's West Side like? Um, a lot of, a lot of uh, kids are dropping out, not going to school. It's basically right. just like right. and around it's the, the it's the, it's the same narrative across the entire country. Yeah. What happens when oil, oil prices go up? What happens? Now that I don't know if, if anyone wants to add some words about what we do and uh, I, think. I think we should start selling weed and cocaine. Stop. That's easy money. Not this, but not to start. That was the best <laughs> idea. Well, us females. I ain't thinking of it as, you know, huh? Yeah, come off the boat. Yeah, come off the boat and everything. I said, we can start right now. Why it's cheap? And then stash it all underground somewhere. Yeah, that's a good idea. 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 Yeah, that's this is what he's saying about community organizing, right? It's either everyone for themselves, you're trying to get rich, and you either get rich or you don't get rich, right? If you get rich, you're chilling. If you don't, I'm sorry, you're fucked, right? And then everyone's after each other, right? It's a dog eat dog world, right? But they're doing that. robbing each other, taking each other's shit. Where people are rich or chilling, right? That's one way to live. Or everyone is working together, like everyone is growing food, so they make sure they can feed everyone, right? It's like you live like ants. Or bees, right? Bees work together to do shit. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. I am. So, you're right. People would rob the shit. It's, 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 I'm just saying. Well, I'm yeah. saying that's like that's like slavery on a little bit. Everybody gonna be growing food. Okay, but how we gonna sell it? Jeremy, like, like, how you feel fresh about it? No, I think we gonna be okay. <laughs> that we 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 as was be. I kind of think. Okay. Oh. I think saying the community knows. Yeah, we're gonna be yeah. okay. They're gonna be okay because everybody, you poor, you gonna want to no, hear what our people say. I know that's how they they, they they try as long as they want more than to be nothing, like to not have nothing. If they want to learn how to grow, we can teach them how to grow. Ain't nothing. It ain't hard to learn how to grow. It ain't hard to learn how to how to keep the money in the community. We gonna, we gonna be something. This community and in general um, lower income African American com communities have been so incredibly marginalized for years. I mean, since they were imported over here as, as slaves. And it's only gotten a little better very, very gradually. But what you have is maybe three generations of people who are used to just not having and, you know, living off of welfare or not going to school not having a job, being unemployed. By now, that's just the norm. That's just what the kids expect. And so we have to work with the kids, and try to just change that, just change that paradigm that they live under, that they operate off of. Um, start to change their paradigm and work ethic, and just habits in general, so that they can at least see a better future for themselves. And if we work with them long enough and kind of reinforce those habits, and um, then hopefully we'll will set them up to be for the change they wish to see in the world but it's going to take a little while in 10 years this could be the alternative right that's the way i see it right and that's what community organizing is right? it's building alternative it's building the support network for people to plug themselves into you right and then figure the entire things out themselves and take it all over right? so, and the decision you make changes the story from in the future right so you have two decisions three decisions that which creates three separate stories, right? What, what are the what are the, the course of decisions that create action that change the future? Where it's like 
you, you read your book and it says, if you want to do this, go to page 13. If you want to do this, go to page 12. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you do the thing and you make the decisions on the book. Right, and then we're going to go into choices, right? So we're really going to make like a little story. Picture book. A little fucking picture book. Or whatever it is, right? It doesn't have to be that, right? We can take this, we take that idea. We can make a pop-up book, son. Pop-up book. So you watch it, huh? And then we're going to go into the four futures of the ninth ward. Could it be completely gentrified? Could it be a third world slum like Shantytown with no sewage, no plumbing? So like that could it be driving, right? With, with walkways and parks and schools and local food and what a community looks like, right? Or could it be something completely different? It's like being the new model. It's being the alternative way of living, right? We have that way. We have the Walmart way of living. We have microwave dinner lifestyle, McDonald's kind of lifestyle, right? What if you had a local farm as the new dependency model? When B and Alan and all of our students are the ones in charge, are the executive directors and the production managers and the projects managers, right? And their children are the children who are working in the store and their mothers are the mothers who are shopping in the store. Great.